Hey Canucks fans, TSN released their annual core four under 24 rankings. And once again, Vancouver is near the top of the list. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. And this is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Friday, November the 22nd. And before I get into those TSN rankings and TSN lists, I wanna quickly talk a bit more about last night's game. You saw my post game vlog where I talked about what I liked, the power play, Jacob Markstrom, Pedersen and Hughes, three points each. What I didn't like, the fact that Canucks gave up the first goal again, and they got outshot by two to one. And one other thing, Tanner Pearson's absolute precision when it comes to nailing empty net goals from 190 feet uh, away. He did it again last night, and he did it against Nashville last week as well. So that's kind of cool. Just wanted to say a couple things. Last night, the Canucks dominated certain facets, i.e. special teams, going five for six on the power play, but they also got dominated, i.e. at even strength, to the point where Nashville had 48 shots to Vancouver's 23. So that shows just how good of a game Jacob Markstrom had. And sometimes the Canucks are gonna win games like last night where they didn't really completely dominate. And sometimes they're gonna lose games where they you think they should have won because they did dominate. Last night was kind of a bit of both, right? On They dominated on the power play, but they got dominated at even strength. So let's not get too high when the Canucks uh, win those type of games. And let's not get too low when the Canucks lose games that you think they should have won. Hopefully it all evens out in the end. But Markstrom had a great game. Obviously, Pedersen and Hughes had a good game. Besser, Miller, Horvat, all with two points each. And, uh, you know, even Gravak uh, chipped in in his limited minutes with a, that power play goal. So overall, a good win, a great uh, great way for the Canucks to even out their record on their on the road trip at one and one before they play Washington tomorrow. And they moved up to third place in the very tight Pacific Division standings. Teams two, three, four, five, even six are all pretty tight in the standings. So there's gonna be a lot of movement after every game, but obviously the Canucks wanna keep moving up. So they are, as of today, they are third place. Tomorrow they play in Washington, 9.30 p.m. local start. No, 9.30 a.m., what am I talking about? I wish it was 9.30 p.m. 9.30 a.m. local start to get an early start to the day. That means it's 12.30 in Washington. And they had an optional skate today where most of the guys, but not all, um, attended. No line rushes or anything like that. Just a chance to work on skills and get some skating in. Okay, let's talk about the TSN annual core four under 24 rankings. And as you can imagine from the name, they look at all the players in the league, or actually not even in the league, but all players that are drafted by NHL teams, because they, they made a point of, uh, of saying that there's a couple guys that they rank that aren't playing in the NHL yet, which I'll get to in a second, has to do with the Canucks, hint, hint. And then um, they look at all those players that are under 24 years old and then rank them, rank them individually and then rank them as teams. And as you can imagine, as we get excited about the Canucks rebuild and, and their future, the Canucks place very highly on these lists. From a team standpoint, they came in fourth and the TSN kind of broken, uh, broke all the teams down into categories and they had the core four teams and Vancouver is one of those core four teams. Number one, no surprise, Edmonton Oilers. Up there you have, of course, McDavid and Dreisaitl and then you have um, two, two blue liners. You have Evan Bouchard and Philip Broberg. So those were the Edmonton top four and that's why they're number one because of mostly McDavid and Dreisaitl. Number two, Colorado Avalanche, you have one forward and three D-men. You have Rantanen and then you have McCarr, Byram and Gerard, so really good um, defensive prospects there. It's Colorado number two. Toronto number three with their big four of Matthews, Marner, um, Nylander, and I'm missing some, oh, uh, Kapanen. So um, Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and Kapanen, a very, very strong four. And then you have the Vancouver Canucks coming in at number four. They were also ranked number four last year. I think Edmonton was ranked number one last year. It was just uh, Colorado and Toronto switched spaces uh, between two and three, respectively. So Vancouver, top four. Bo Horvat is now out because he's too old, but he gets replaced by Vasily Podkolzin, our, our 10th overall draft pick, first round pick this year. So the core four for Vancouver that they list is, of course, Elias Pettersson, Brock Besser, Quinn Hughes, and Vasily Podkolzin. And they make a point they're saying for the Canucks to still be in the top four even after losing their captain, their young captain, says a lot about how good Podkolzin is and how good um, the team is overall, the youngsters. And Podkolzin is one of four NHL, one, sorry, one of four players who are not yet in the NHL that TSN included in their rankings of all the players. So I think that's good. You know, I, I, you would never say that Vancouver is better than, has better uh, younger players than Edmonton be, just because of the McDavid and Drysaddle fi factor, Colorado or Toronto. So I think Vancouver is um, realistically, is properly, is a better word, placed as number four. And you know, especially when I, I made that tweet and got a lot of response last week about 
which young four would you rather have, Vancouver's or Colorado's? And actually for Vancouver, I had Horvat in there instead of Pakosin. And for Colorado, I had McKinnon and Laniscog in there in, uh, along with Ranton and, and Makara. And I didn't have Gerard or Byron in there because I, it wasn't so much about core four and 24, it's simply which core would you rather have? And most people, you know, although they, they like Vancouver's core, they like Colorado's core even more. So it makes sense um, that, that Colorado's ranked two and Vancouver's ranked four. But I think it's a good ranking. And you look at Elias Pettersson, obviously Calder Trophy winner. Sing I always said he's single-handedly sped up the rebuild of Vancouver by a year or two. You have Brock Bester on pace for a really, really good season. He's kind of quiet, right? Kind of gets less fanfare than Pettersson and even Quinn Hughes, but still having a really good year. Then you have Quinn Hughes, who we're all excited about. Three assists last night. And then Vasily Podkosin, we know we're not going to get him for another year and a half. But when he comes, he looks to be uh, a huge difference maker. And then they also listed guys like when they expanded overall, guys like Thatcher Demko and Tyler Madden and Hoglander. I'm not sure if he made the list, but overall, the Canucks fourth overall, and you can't quibble with that. So I'd love to know what you think. Do you agree with the ranking that they are fourth in the entire league, core four under 24? Do you have any problems with them being ranked four? Do you think that's too low? And if so, who would they displace between Edmonton, Colorado, and Toronto? And do you agree with that ranking, Edmonton, Colorado, Toronto, Vancouver? Then they rank the top 50 players overall, and Elias Pettersson comes in at number five. Really, really cool. Um, ahead of him, McDavid, Dreisaito, Pasternak from Boston, Austin Matthews from Toronto, then Elias Pettersson is number five. Behind Pettersson, Braden Point, number six. Then you have Jack Eichel, number seven, Miro Hiskin at number eight, Mikko Ranton at number nine, and Matthew Kachuk at number 10. So some really, really good players when you, when you rattle off those names. McDavid, Dreisaito, Pasternak, Matthews, Pettersson, Point, who's number seven, Eichel, Heiskinen, Rantanen, and Kachuk. So for Pedersen even to be mentioned in those group of players is, is wonderful, wonderful testament to how good he is and how good people think he is uh, around the league. And for him to be number five ahead of guys like Point and Eichel and Rantanen, Heiskinen, and Kachuk, I think speaks volumes. And I think it's really cool. Obviously, we get excited when we see a Vancouver Canucks player on a list like that and rank so high. I, I have no problem with him being number five. I think it might... Um, I wouldn't argue if he was closer to six, seven, or eight. Of course, I want him as high as possible, but I, you know, I wouldn't have freaked out if, if Point or Eichel or even Hiskinen or Ranton or Kachuk, if any of those guys were ranked ahead of him. But the fact that Pedersen is number five, number five, the five best players, the fifth best player in the world under 24 years of age, and he's only 21, that's really, really awesome. And I'm not going to put him ahead, there's no way, I'm not going to put him ahead of McDavid or Dreisaito or Pasternak or Matthews right now. But in a couple of years, a couple of those guys are gonna age out and Pedersen's gonna be in this ranking for two more seasons. So maybe he gets close to that number one ranking over the next couple of years. So I have no problem with Pedersen being at number five. Like I said, I would have no problem if he was ranked somewhere in the bottom five of the, of the top 10. But for him to be number five, I think it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so I'd love to know what you think, Canucks fans, about that. Do you think that's too high? Do you think that's too low? And what kind of ranking would you give if you have any big uh, uh, discrepancies from the TSN ranking? Then Brock Besser, I think he's ranked number 26 out of the 50. So the Canucks have two players in the in the top 50, which is really cool. I, um, Quinn Hughes didn't make the top 50, but I'm sure he was close to it. At least that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So Canucks fans, let me know what you think. When you hear Vancouver Canucks overall fourth, in the entire league, core four, under 24, looking at all their young players under 24 years of age. Do you like that ranking? Do you think it's fair? And then Elias Pettersson, number five out of all NHL players under 24 years of age. I think that's awesome. What do you think of that ranking? Too high, too low, and tell me why. Let's create some discussion. I'd love to know what you think. Leave a comment below. I'll read, react, and reply as always. Core four, under 24. I'll link it as well in the, in the description so you can check out the lists and the videos on TSN as well. Let me know what you think. I'd love to know. Uh, subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the day. Tomorrow, Vancouver, Washington. Get up early and watch the Canucks try and take down the Washington Capitals. Have a great day. God bless. Go Canucks go.